Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this lecture, we are going to talk about Base Excision Repair, also known as BER, short form. We'll talk about Base Excision Repair mechanism. We'll talk about the enzymes involved in Base Excision Repair. We'll also talk about why Base Excision Repair is important and when it occurs in the cell. So let's begin. Now remember, if you want to understand the different repair mechanisms in the DNA, including base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair, methyl mismatch repair. I want you to watch all the lectures on these different topics. This series of videos are about the DNA repair mechanisms. But particularly, what is important about base excision repair? Base excision repair is a me mechanism of DNA repair when there is a DNA error or there is a... So, what do we mean by DNA error? The DNA error we are trying to fix here is, uh, let's say, a presence of presence of uracil in DNA, presence of U in DNA. That is counted as an error because DNA supposed to carry deoxyribonucleic acid and not only ribonucleic acid. Now, U or uracil is a ribonucleic acid or RNTP, not DRNTP. So, as the U is present, in the structure of DNA, which is not tolerated by the cell. So, as it is not tolerated, which is not wanted, so the cell want to fix this error. Now, why a U is in place uh, of a DNA? Why U can be found in the DNA? Due to separate reasons, for example, uh, reason number one, if I talk about, is uh, the chemical modification. Chemical modification. Example of such is deamination deamination now a simple deamination can convert c into u the cytosine can be converted to uracil due to this deaminase activity deamination process okay so in this way the normal dna bases can be modified to ntps like u and when this thing happens, it is very crucial that the cell can recognize this as an error and can get out of this error. Then the cell recruits this base excision repair. Now the base excision repair uh, fixes only small lesions in the DNA, small lesions of the DNA. Only it fixes small lesions such small lesions which generally do not change the spirality of the uh, DNA or the spiral structure of the DNA. Now, the lesions are small, they will not impact in the structure of the DNA. But if the lesion size is big, let us say when the lesion is formed uh, with more than one nucleotide, let us say thymine dimer formation, that can alter and hinders with the DNA helical structure. In that case, we need to recruit nucleotide excision repair. So, base excision repair works in very discrete small area where the lesion is very small so small that it will not impact the helical structure of the DNA then base excision repair is in place it is in the action now in this base excision repair mechanism what are the type of enzymes that are involved in this process now let me uh, write down the name of the enzymes here so the first enzyme that we are going to see is uh, a so so the very first one is glycosylase enzyme okay so the first one the first enzyme involved here is known as a glycosylase glycosylase enzyme now this glycosylase nomenclature is something like if we need to cleave out the uracil then the name of the enzyme will be uracil glycosylase or dna uracil glycosylase similarly if you want to cleave out a then adenosine glycosylase so the name will be uh, based on the base that it cuts out now, the role of glycosylase is to cut the base out. Remember that. Cut the base out. Means basically, the phosphodiester bond remained in that place. Okay. And only it cleaves out, it cleaves out the rest of the nucleotide apart from the phosphodiester bond. So, so the phosphodiester linkage that is present should be there. So, the idea is, let us imagine that this is the strand, this is where uracil is in place, rest of the other uh, nucleotides are here and this is the other strand, okay. 
okay now the job here is basically to cut this portion out okay so when you cut this portion out will end up in a structure something like this if you check here this area is now having a gap but the phosphodiester bond which is shown in green color remained intact so glycosylase activity so this is where glycosylase activity is in place glycosylase activity only cut out the portion of the nucleotide but not the overall nucleotide from the strand so the phosphodiester bond remain intact after glycosylase activity then comes the second enzyme here the second enzyme involved in here and that is known as endonuclease known as ap endonuclease now what do we mean by ap a purine uh, or a pyrimidine whatever nucleotide is being cleaved out based on that ap endonuclease now the job of it ap endonuclease is to lay a cut in the phosphodiester backbone that cut will be introduced by ap endonuclease clear so ap purinic endonuclease or of ap pyrimidinic endonuclease so here ap purinic endonuclease that cleaves the phosphodiester bond then comes the third set of enzyme here obviously as the bond is now phosphodiester bond is cut so the nick is there and not only the phosphodiester bond is cut in here basically after cutting the phosphodiester bond some of the section of the nucleotides are also chopped out so neighboring sections are also chopped out and this this is also done by this endonucleases that's why the job is endonuclease they cut it and they cut some of this so now as a gap is there the gap need to be filled by polymerase by dna polymerase enzyme and the polymerase enzyme involved here is polymerase beta not polymerase alpha not polymerase delta epsilon any of this polymerase beta fills this gap and the last step is ligation of the nick that is done by dna ligase and particularly dna ligase 3 so these are the four different set of enzymes that are involved glycosylase okay dna uracil glycosylase so you can write dna uracil glycosylase is the enzyme the, for the first step the second step ap endonuclease ap endonuclease 1 ape1 is the second set of enzymes involved the third set of enzyme while filling the gap is by polymerase beta and the fourth set of uh, step that is the ligation of the nick is done by dna ligase 3 so these are the four sequential steps involved in the process of base excision repair when there is an issue in any of this base which is erroneous which should not be present in the dna the dna recognizes it and they are trying to fix this with the step of glycosylase ependonuclease polymerase beta and ligase 3 activity in that order okay and uh, as a result at the end what we can clearly see is that uh, the process is done and the error is fixed without any problem so at the end we are getting a healthy copy of the dna without any uracil in it so the error is fixed so this is a process of base excision repair i already mentioned why base excision repair is done why it is important what are the list of enzymes that are involved in there in that order in that sequence and you know important bits and pieces about base excision repair if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye